welcome back to this series of tutorials by FlingOS. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to program our OS in C and how to link together the C and assembly code. In the previous tutorial, we looked at how to initialize the processor so it is in a known and stable state. Also, up until now, we have only been using a single assembly file and the NASM compiler to build our operating system. The linker program LD was used briefly but unexplained. In this tutorial, we will be adding the C language to our list, and we will be using the linker software tool to much greater effect. Specifically, we will be using the program known as LD. More on that later though. For now, let's briefly discuss why we would want to use a language such as C, and not just assembly code. As I mentioned in a previous tutorial, assembly code is architecture specific, which means it can't be ported from one system to another. Hopefully by now, you've also realized that it can be tricky to write, read, and maintain. This gets a lot worse when you start writing longer functions. Assembly code is also pretty tedious to write, since even basic while loops take a lot of planning and design to create. The C programming language allows us to solve a lot of these problems. Primarily, it is inspecific to any architecture, because the compiler converts the C code to machine code, and can produce machine code for many different architectures. This means C code is portable. Secondly, C code is much easier to write, read, and maintain. It's much faster and easier to write and understand, and does not require you to carefully plan which registers are used for what. C handles all of the real low-level stuff, like registers and the stack, for you. There's a lot of incentives for using C, therefore. However, in the next tutorial we will also look at how you can use C-sharp, which is favourable for a number of reasons, which will be discussed next time. We'll start by creating a simple C file, which will contain a main entry point for our operating system. The code in this main method will execute after our existing assembly code. The method will contain some very simple code to output colour to the screen, like we did in assembly code. I'm assuming you already understand C and pointers, so you should be able to produce the main method code, as described, fairly easily. You can use the values from the assembly code for the pointer values, and such like. The following block of code should be what you have in your main method. Before we look at how we can call our C method from assembly code, let's compile our C into machine code, so we have something the computer can work with. We will use a common C compiler known as GCC, the GNU C compiler. You can download the required version of GCC for Windows from the following link. These binaries are pre-compiled and kindly provided by osdev.org users. The version required is i686-elf-target for whichever host you are running on. The version number is not particularly important for us. There are multiple different formats for machine code produced by GCC. What we require is for the output format to be ELF, which is traditionally used by Linux. If you're running on Windows or Mac, default installations of GCC will compile to PE or Mac O respectively. So what we need is a cross compiler the OS Dev website has a list of cross-compiler packages that have been pre-built by its users. The download you should have produces, i.e. targets, the ELF format, but runs on whichever host. Other projects such as Sigwin and MinGW provide versions of GCC which compile on a Windows host targeting the Windows PE format. These will not work for compiling our OS, since PE is a totally different format of machine code to ELF so please make sure you use the correct version of GCC if you have more than one installed. If you're on Linux, the correct version of GCC should already be installed. Check for it by running gcc-version. Otherwise, use one of the downloads that I showed earlier. Compile your C file using the following command. Now we need to think about how we can call our C code from our assembly code. To understand this, we must understand a process called linking. Linking is a part of the compilation process. It is the last step in creating a complete program. The compiler first converts all human-readable code such as C or assembly code into machine code. 
For each file, it produces a new file, which we call an object file. This object file does not just contain the machine code, however. It also contains information about methods, structures, and global variables used that exist outside of the file, i.e. it includes information about methods and such like that are in other files. Linking is the process of taking all the files and making the references between them link up. It combines all of the object files into one complete binary file, which is, in our case, almost completely machine code. So we understand that linking is making references between files tie up. This doesn't really give us any understanding of what a reference is though, so let me try to explain. In one file we might allocate some space for a global variable. This is where the variable will actually be stored. If we use the variable within the same file, that's fine because the compiler knows exactly where in memory the variable is. However, if we use the global variable in another file, the compiler for that file does not know where the memory is for the variable. All it knows is that it will exist somewhere. So in the machine code, the compiler doesn't output an address. Instead, it outputs a placeholder and makes a note of that in the start of the file that the placeholder needs replacing with the actual memory address. The linker is what goes through all the files, combining the machine code, calculating the addresses of variables, and then filling in all the placeholders. You should be able to realize that the same has to occur for methods, since they exist at some address in memory. This gives us enough understanding to make a call from our assembly code to our method in C. The first step is to tell the compiler that the method we want to call exists outside of our assembly code file. We do this using the extern keyword like so, extern main. Now we just use the call operation in our assembly code to call the method. The compiler knows it is external, so we'll put a placeholder in the machine code. We will look later at how to use the linker to produce our final operating system binary file. The call should be placed immediately after our existing initialization code. We'll now modify our build script to include the steps for compiling the C code and for linking it all together. We will be linking the code using a program called LD. Your batch script for building should now look like this. Go ahead and test it all to make sure it all works, remembering to real compile first. You should see the color from our C method outputted to the screen. Next time we will be looking at how to do the equivalent main method but using C Sharp and the Fling OS drivers compiler. This will require you to be running on Windows. If you are not running on Windows, please skip the next tutorial and go on to tutorial 7. Tutorial 7 will look at memory and virtual memory and also explain how to make our kernel a higher half kernel.